this last week. First time for ages. I'd not been since the government started running the NHS like a business. The Bank of Credit and Commerce. <laughs> so I went along to the surgery, and as usual, the first obstacle to overcome was the doctor's receptionist. Now, doctor's receptionists are so full of themselves, aren't they? I mean, what you've got to remember is, six weeks ago, this woman was working on the cold meat counter at Tesco. <laughs> now she's an expert on every known medical disease. <laughs> but actually, they know sod all. <laughs> Could I see the doctor, please? What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, I'd like to see the doctor. Yes, but what's wrong with you? <laughs> Laryngitis! <laughs> It's your own fault, you should have used a condom. <laughs> Wait in the waiting room. Now, doctors' waiting rooms are always packed and you can never get a seat. But here's a tip on how to get a seat and also make sure no one stands near you. And what you do is get one of those old magazines that are always lying around, OK? You know, the ones with an interview with Joan of Arc just before she went to the stake. <laughs> And hold the magazine over your groin. Right, right. And put your hand under it and start scratching on it. <laughs> you won't believe how fast people will move. <laughs> anyway, two days later, I finally got to see the doctor. And the first thing he says to me is, Are you in the club? <laughs> well, I must cut down on the Guinness. <laughs> Are you in Booper? I said, no, I'm in the Tofty Club. <laughs> he wasn't too impressed. He said, well, what's wrong? I said, well, it's my eyes. What's wrong with your eyes? He said, well, when I get up in the morning, all I can see are these big black spots and wiggles and squiggles. Well, have you seen an optician? I said, no, just these big black spots. <laughs> so he looked at my tongue and he looked at me watching and said, your time's up, eh? He said, take this bottle of pills and follow the instructions on the cap. I looked down and it said, push off. <laughs> oh, charming. I can see a time in the future when there'll be no NHS. And you have to start paying for all your own treatment. Then going to the doctor will be a bit like servicing your car, you know. Instead of a surgery, there'll be a service bay. You walk in and there'll be this medical cowboy wiping blood off his hands with an old vest, you know. And <laughs> you take one look at you and go... <laughs> I don't like the look of this. We don't normally deal with models this old, you know. <laughs> what do you think, Darren? Big end gone? <laughs> and you'll be up on the ramp with your trousers round your ankles and your spotty YTS kid will take your pulse and grease your nipples, you know? <laughs> and it's into the lubricating bay for the service and you come out patched up with unipart spares and your cracks filled with tetraseal. <laughs> of course, you can get plastic surgery on the NHS, you know. With all sorts of operations available, lots of men are having their beer bellies removed by liposuction, right? And when they've sucked all the flab out, it's rebottled and sold as Advocar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting too sick for you, am I? <laughs> Neil Kinnock's going in to have all the freckles removed from both his faces. <laughs> Paddy Ashdown's going in to have an extra bum fitted so he can sit on the fence and still keep a seat in the house. <laughs> Of course, Andrew Lloyd Webber's going in to show prospective patients what can go wrong. <laughs> Woody Allen's a great fan of our medical system, you know. He has to be. You can only get those sort of glasses on the NHS. <laughs> you can buy glasses anywhere now, can't you? In the garages, market stores. There's even a, a place in Cardiff where they've got a drive-in spectacle centre. Guaranteed to get you in and out in ten minutes. And I was thinking, if you need glasses that badly, what are you doing driving in the first place? <laughs> with all this going on, it's no wonder people are turning to alternative medicine. But the problem with alternative medicine is that there's so much of it. I mean, you can go to an aromatherapist, a kinesiologist, a homeopath. A homeopath. <laughs> it sounds like a gay axe murderer. <laughs> of alternative medicine if there's uh, less of those dangerous drugs around to top yourself, you know? I mean, you can't commit suicide by getting a pot of evening primrose oil and rubbing yourself in it. <laughs> you have to think of new ways of killing yourself, you know, like drinking a pint of tap water. <laughs> have, you heard, have you heard of these new smart drugs that are coming in from America? Are you familiar with that? They, it, well, it, they sound too good to be true. 
apparently they're said to make you outstandingly intelligent, bursting with vitality, and sexually formidable. <laughs> I don't believe a word. I'm sticking with alcohol. <laughs> well, at least you know where you stand, don't you? I mean, it makes you moronically stupid. You can hardly stay upright, and as for sexual potency, you've got more chance of raising the Titanic. <laughs> Other news now. Government cuts announced today have led to a spending freeze within the BBC. Over 500 jobs are due to go, mostly in the current affairs department. Among those affected will be many of the support staff within the newsroom, many of whom will be forced to take early retirement or face dismissal without compensation. It's probable that the cuts will fall most heavily amongst technical and backroom staff, including autocue operators. That's what you think, mate. We're not leaving this cushy little number not for anything. <laughs> the BBC, we know you're not wearing any trousers. <laughs> um, and there will also be uh, job losses amongst caption writers <laughs> and camera operators. Um, but, but studio directors will escape unscathed. Um, at least for the moment. The BBC said that... <laughs> the BBC... The BBC... <clears throat> the, um, the, the BBC said um, that the cuts were unfortunate, but necessary in the light of the current economic climate. However, a spokesman for the BBC Union said that the staff uh, would not take this lying down and would not be afraid to hold demonstrations into picket studios if necessary. The impossibility of lightning strikes could not be ruled out. Some news uh, just in. Uh, following an 11th hour crisis meeting, BBC governors have agreed to withdraw their proposed redundancies. <coughs> uh, instead, savings could be made by cutting staff in the BBC Children's Unit. Beep, 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 bollocks! Sunshine. <laughs> Move your butt, job threat. Are you sure about that lipstick? Yes. <laughs> Pinky, that's all, and your dress is more strawberry. You're loving this, aren't you? You're loving every minute. Just clashes, that's all. It's supposed to clash. I'm a prostitute, not Gloria Bloody Hollyford. <laughs> Actually, I wanted something in navy, but they wouldn't have it. <laughs> be quiet! That must be HQ, you better answer it. Where else can you put a police issue two-way radio in this dress? Oh, stand still, I'll get it. Hello, Tango Victor. This is Scarlet Patrol. <laughs> Tango Victor, come in. Tango Victor. You must have got it tuned into the wrong frequency again. Give it a stereo. Try that. <laughs> this is Scarlet Patrol. Scarlet Patrol. Yep, this is Scarlet Patrol. Scarlet Patrol. <laughs> Come in, please. Message received. The passenger calls Scarlet Patrol on the corner of Lilac Avenue. Any idea where she wants to go? Tango Victor, Tango Victor, will you come in, please? <laughs> 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 I'll do that. Thank 
<laughs> Don't forget, get him to hand over the money first and then we'll nick him. Jump in then, love. Hello, dearie. Fancy a good time? <laughs> All right, straight to the point. How much? Depends how far you want to go. <laughs> all the way. All the way. I don't want to go all the way. I'll go as far as you want to go. But I must be finished by midnight. I don't normally go beyond the outer circle. <laughs> how much is it if he doesn't want to go beyond the outer circle? <laughs> Maybe that's the outer circle. You can try going through the underpass if you want. Do you know what he's got under there? <laughs> Something that could get you into a lot of trouble. <laughs> Honestly, men. <laughs> Your mother thinks satin. Maybe silk's nicer. Well, that's your decision. Up, uh, bridesmaids? Two, I think. And a page boy. I don't want you tripping over the train. Hey, stuff the page boy. Just make sure the midwife's there. Be national. The happy of all the time. This little box of Lenore refill. Just how much Lenore softness does it contain? Stacks of it. All right. <laughs> Who's nicked all the damn towels? No, so much softness. <laughs> so much softness. <laughs> Here, you're looking for somebody. <laughs> You gonna drink or play? Plays kazoo. <laughs> if there's one thing guaranteed in life, other than death, it's the fact that someone will try and con you every single day of your life. Hmm? Cons start when you're a kid. You fall over in the yard and you scrape the side of your leg so it looks like a slice of corned beef. <laughs> you run home screaming to your mum until now you have trusted her implicitly. She goes to the medicine cabinet, gets out a big bottle of iodine, gets hold of your leg <laughs> and says, now this won't hurt. <laughs> Do you promise? Well, just a teensy weensy little bit. <laughs> The next thing you know is that someone has put your leg in a bucket of molten lava. <laughs> you hop off the wall, across the ceiling, screaming blue murder, and what does your mum say? Don't be such a big baby. <laughs> you should learn straight away, but you don't. They take you to Foster Brothers for a uniform for your new school, and your mum gives you a coat and pants to try on. The sleeves in the blazer come down to your knees. And the crotch of the trousers is dragging on the floor. 
<laughs> and your mum says, don't worry, you'll grow into them. <laughs> I've got blazers in my wardrobe now. From when I was seven years old and I still can't see my damn hands. <laughs> so, first day at my new school and I'm flapping around like a walrus. And I get a bit of hassle from the school bully, Morgan. Not surprisingly, wearing what I'm wearing, he thinks I've left my brains in the tuck shop. <laughs> and he tries to sell me a dead hedgehog for five pounds. <laughs> and can he have the money the following day, or I'll get a dandruff salad. <laughs> so I go home and I tell me dad, and he said, nonsense. You're not paying five pounds for a dead hedgehog? <laughs> Tell him what he can do with his hedgehog. And remember, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. No. The bigger they are, the harder they hit you. I went back to school next day and confronted Morgan. He was six foot three tall and built like a brick shelter. I drew myself up to my full height, looked Morgan straight in the navel. And I told him where he could put his stupid dead hedgehog. <laughs> that same afternoon, Morgan was in hospital, watching the surgeon removing the final remains of the dead hedgehog from my ass. <laughs> Pets are another con. I mean, you get a hamster for Christmas because you're told a hamster will repay all the love you can show it. Oh, yeah? You clean its cage out, feed it every day by the wheel and a mirror, and the first chance it gets of escaping from its cage, it repays you by throwing itself on the robo-chef. <laughs> I've got five pounds for it at school. <laughs> Cons are never-ending. What about fireworks today? I mean, I think that's a case for the Trades Description Act. It never used to be. When I was a lad, fireworks were fireworks. You bought a banger, and that's what you got. A banger. Standard fireworks used to make one called a mighty atom. What? Whew. You could see off two pounds of Semtex, this thing. <laughs> and as for Brock's big birth, a blimey, you had to set it off underground. <laughs> In Nevada. <laughs> I mean, you'd buy rockets that you had to point at Saturn and jumping jacks with proper instructions on the label. Place inside small boy's hood and run for it. <laughs> That's what fireworks are about. But now it's pathetic. I mean, they still call them things like intergalactic thunder blaster. Hey, I've heard tortoises fart louder. <laughs> You've got to stick it in your lug hole to hear it go off. You know? <laughs> I tell you, we stand for anything these days, don't we? I mean, gift vouchers. There you are, there's another one. Gift vouchers. Buy a WH Smith £10 gift voucher and you can spend it at any branch of WH Smith's. Wow! <laughs> What a fabulous idea! Hey, I was going to give my nephew one of those stupid, awkward ten-pound notes that you can only spend in every shop in Britain. <laughs> Insurance companies are even worse. OK, Mr Carrot, here's the deal. You pay us money for the rest of your life, and when you die, we'll give it back to you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, you think when you're dead, the cons are going to stop, right? Wrong, wrong. Because some bright Arthur Daly has come up with the idea of cryogenics. Hmm? This is where, when you die, your body is frozen in ice until such time science has advanced to the point where bodies can be unfrozen and brought back to life. <laughs> 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 Who's behind this? Bird's eye? <laughs> I mean, do they know something we don't? You know, like in a few years' time, there's going to be such a shortage of food, we'll be desperate to eat anything? <laughs> Special offer, bird's eye fingers. <laughs> Oven ready, cocker van. <laughs> yeah, but whose? 
<laughs> and as for thinness rump steak, <laughs> forget it, forget it. It could be Margaret Thatcher's. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that brought back to life so she can start talking through it again, do you? <laughs> What have you got then? Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with it? It's a vegetarian. <laughs> Last night ripped a cabbage to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? A kitten. Kitten? What, leopard is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> right down our road's got a leopard. Schizophrenic leopard. Half the time it thinks it's a shark. Tell you what, if you're up the local pool and you see a spotty tail playing through the water towards you, swim like buggery. What's <laughs> your kitten got wrong with him then? Well, he's off his food. Uh, I've got a Doberman that's off his food. What does it eat? Kittens. <laughs> Look, aren't, aren't pit bulls supposed to all be neutered? Yeah, but I can't prove he's a pit bull, see? He's a crossbreed. Half American bull terrier, half Labrador. If he bites your arm off, he brings you a roll of bog pipes to mop it up with. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't like dogs very much. I prefer cats. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some cats is good. Some cats make nice pets. Tigers, for instance. <laughs> yeah, they, they have ten owners say, ah! <laughs> Mate of mine, he's got a killer whale. I'll tell you something, nobody's ever burgled his bathroom. <laughs> Come to that, nobody's ever had a bath. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would want a dangerous animal loose in their house, and I'm jolly glad the Home Secretary's done something about it. What are these new laws? No, they're ridiculous, completely over the top. When I went on holiday, I used to board him at Kennels. Now, I have to book him into Broadmoor. <laughs> Shut up! And he has to wear a muzzle the whole time. I have to feed him through a straw. I don't half feel stupid feeding the winner lot into the liquidizer. <laughs> That's all a mistake anyway. I mean, your pit bull's a very useful animal, yeah. Makes a very good guide dog. Yeah. The blind person never bumps into anybody, because they're all running like buggery. <laughs> Plus, you don't have to install the dog flat. Pit bull just goes straight through the wall. Yeah, but they're not, they're not allowed to breathe, though, are they? Yeah, that makes me laugh. That does. That makes me laugh. Once a pit bull starts feeling randy, there's not a lot you can do about it. <laughs> well, there is. Well, I'd like to see Kenneth Baker try. He's a very sore leg, I can tell you that. <laughs> people like you. Well, to me, you see, a tame animal's not interesting. Not interesting at all. I mean, they don't bother with them for the adverts, do they? I mean, you wouldn't sell a lot of petrol if it was, uh, S.O., put a guinea pig in your tank. <laughs> or Peugeot, the ring-tailed lemur goes from street to street. <laughs> Shut up, Timmy! Yeah, all right. Actually, actually, I've been lying to you, because this isn't a kitten at all, actually. Actually, this is the most vicious dog ever bred. Yeah, this dog makes Arnold Schwarzenegger look like John Craven. Right, <laughs> yeah, not only does this dog fight, kill, cook and eat other dogs, but it also organises armed robberies. It can strip and reassemble a machine gun in 15 seconds. This dog can prime and detonate a nuclear weapon and it's a Terminator. <laughs> What's he doing here, then? My kitten attacked him. <laughs> this week, we're going to spend a day at a health farm to learn how to keep fit and how to keep your body in shape. It's always a good idea to loosen up and stretch your muscles with a session at the aerobics class. At first, with so many perfect specimens around, you may feel a little self-conscious. <laughs> well, don't worry, you'll soon fit in and be just another member of the class. <laughs> so just join in and do what everyone else is doing. aerobics class, what better way to relax than a quiet dip in the spa pool? <laughs> Do 
be sure not to go into the water too soon after your high-fibre breakfast. start on the road to fitness, you have to find out how fit you already are. And a good place to measure your strength is in the weights room. <laughs> and some modern equipment is technologically advanced, so it's always a good idea to get expert instruction before you start. It's important to relax between workouts, and a good way is in the steam cabinet. But remember, not too hot. was close. <laughs> no visit to the health farm would be complete without a relaxing sauna. Saunas are often mixed, but in this healthy, wholesome environment, there's nothing to be ashamed of. attention to those muscles that may be prone to flabbiness and modern toning equipment can leave you feeling really exhilarated so you see getting healthy doesn't have to hurt it can even be pleasurable <laughs> yes with a little application and dedication you too can have a physique to be proud of Have fun in the sun. <laughs> With your newfound friends. At the end of the show, just to say, on next week's show, we'll be investigating British telecom information lines. Are they just a rip-off? To find out more, call us on 0898 <laughs> <laughs>